Hello, everybody. Jeff Mason, your host with Simple Biz 360 Podcast. Welcome to the show today. Hey, do you guys want to put a smile on a customer face today? Do you actually uh, want to have customers, you know, refer your business? Do you want your customers to keep coming back for more? Well, sure. The answer to all those questions is yes. Well, I tell you what, if so, grab a cup of coffee. We got ours. Give me 15 minutes Let's hop the fence together and, and get on the other side of the fence and look at our businesses through the customer lens. I think you're going to have some fun with this one today. So first things first, shout out. Hey, Dietz, Matt, great job. Half Coast Studios, St. Louis, Missouri. I really appreciate everything you guys do. Great engineering, great color, great sound. Also, hey, if you're if you're you know like the show and you haven't subscribed yet, man, we would love your YouTube subscription. So if you're looking at the screen, lower right hand corner, there's a favicon there, a little pinwheel. Hover over it. That'll take you to uh, YouTube. You have to be signed into YouTube to to uh, to actually subscribe. And there's a couple other ways you can you can subscribe once you're on YouTube as well. If you don't. You know, if you listen to us and you don't watch, that's great. We're on 26 platforms, all the biggies, Google, Pandora, iHeart, Spotify, Stitcher, you name it, Amazon. Uh, feel free to subscribe there, or if not, just catch us every Thursday morning, 7.30 Central. That's when we appear. So we're going to focus on the act of doing business today, right? And it's this is going to kind of be a fun show, but the act of doing business, you know, it, I mean, it's got this huge mushroom cloud around the business entity that we work with that has all these varied responsibilities. And as business owners, if you're an entrepreneur, solopreneur, mompreneur, man, you could get saddled with all these responsibilities. I mean, there's marketing, there's sales, there's distribution, there's vendor relations, there's production, there's packaging, there's finance, there's digital assets, there's website. I could go on and on. There's so many things that we could get mired in that, that sometimes we end up trying to offload some of the work. And in doing so, we unintentionally, or maybe sometimes intentionally, we offload the work to the customer. Kind of like the last person you want to offload some of this work to. But we find ourselves in that position. Again, I've worked for 32 companies, 35 years, nine different industries. I've seen this happen way more than I care to admit. So what we're going to do is just kind of a, do a little role playing today. It's going to kind of be fun. I'm going to dip back on my old thespian days and uh, we're going to just do some light, uh, a light example for you. Uh, Bob is the customer and I'm the salesperson. We're just going to kind of walk through uh, something that um, could possibly happen. So let's rewind the clock to an electronic package. I, as the salesperson, right, send out to Bob during uh, during the early couple days of the new year in January. Now, first thing I do, right, is I send Bob a price file. But that price file is in PDF format, and it doesn't show last year's prices to this year's prices, doesn't show what increased, doesn't give them any comparison. So what am I doing really? I'm basically giving a PDF file to Bob and I'm saying, Bob, you kind of figure out for yourself, um, you know, what the price differences are, right? I didn't figure it out, the company didn't figure it out, so you do it. Now, second thing is, um, you know, the price list is in PDF. Well, that's hard for a lot of people to export information from, right? They can't on a PDF file. So now what they've got to do in many cases is, in a lot of cases, they've got to go chunk it out and type it themselves, right? So again, we're transferring that workload to the customer to create information that they can transfer into an Excel file. So you're seeing something here that's called WBL, and that's weight-bearing load. So we're now transferring this weight-bearing load to the customer, right? So, hey, Excel spreadsheets, we send it over. Once we do get Excel pricing, right, we send it over, and that Excel pricing is now uh, formatted so the guy goes to print it or the gal goes to print it in their office, and it's a nine-page file that prints 66 pages. Nobody formatted it right. So now Bob has to go format that Excel file so it doesn't waste, you know, 58 pieces of paper, right? And, you know, he's got to now reprint it, reformat it, spend the time to reformat it, and reprint it. Well, now, 
The other thing that's a pain, right, is our, our graphics person does a phenomenal job on getting that file over to me, and I pass it on to Bob, and it's this beautiful Excel file. It has all these separator rows in the Excel file. So you have, you know, 10 rows of data, and then a separator file, then all these separator files that have cute labels on them with yellow backgrounds and black. Well, now Bob can't sort that file and work with that file in a streamlined fashion and filter it. He's got to remove all those um, separator lines that are that are in rows, right? So again, say, hey, Bob, you know, kind of tough noogies, right? So um, Bob now has to take that workload and, you know, I just transferred that weight-bearing load to Bob for that. So now he's got that saddled with him. Now, what about the uh, multiple experience? price sheets, right? So my company has four different brands. So we set him four different price sheets. Well, he's like, you know, I, I, I'm, I don't really look at the different brands. My personnel come to me and they want to know what price it is and what style it is. And they don't really tell me it's this brand or that brand. They just say, hey, here's a style number. Now I got to open up four sheets. Well, it's not on this brand here. Let me open up this sheet. No, it's not on this brand either. I'm, oh, it's on this brand here. Uh, and now Bob's got to remember, oh, this brand, they start with a P in front. This brand, they start with a number in front. You know, Bob's some cases could be dealing with dozens and dozens and dozens of vendors and price sheets. He doesn't want to have to think about that, right? So again, what did I do? The four different price sheets. I just basically transferred that over to Bob and said, Bob, I'm sure you can handle it, buddy. You just do that. You just take care of that. And that's another weight transferring bearing load that I'm just putting around your neck to kind of make it a little bit heavier, right? So what about the flyers with pictures, right? And you get, oh, great flyers, great pictures. You pass it on to your customers. They go, yeah, I want this one right here. Well, what, what's, what style number is it? I don't know what style number it is. Well, how do you know? Well, again, I got to get the catalog, open up the catalog, flip through the pages, match up. Oh, this picture is that. Okay, that's what he wants. That's the style number. You know, now I got to go in and, and hunt and peck for that style number. Again, what are we doing? We're just causing more headache for Bob by making Bob work that sheet, right? I got two here I'm going to put up at one time. So what's the next thing, right? Well, the website has no style numbers, right? Same thing as the flyer. Now, Bob's got to figure out, same process, right? So now I'm saddling Bob with two more weight-bearing loads because he's got to now spend all this time cross-referencing, going to the website, open up the catalog, looking, finding, matching, saying, okay, I think this is a style number, Oh, and Bob's getting tired, you can tell, right? So now, right, the application process. When I sent Bob all the application process initially, he was kind of ticked at me. Why was he ticked? Because I sent him this fillable Word document form, right? And he's like, oh, gosh, this guy couldn't even put my address, my phone numbers, my fax numbers, my website in there. I got to do all this. I mean, there's a bunch of stuff, my name, my email address. There's a bunch of things you could populate as the company but you didn't. So, you know, again, a little more workload on my end. Uh, and you know what? Bob doesn't have a sophisticated purchasing system. So Bob came to me and he said, hey, is there any way you can get me an Excel order sheet? I can't do it, dude. I mean, my company didn't give it to me. I don't have it, so I can't produce it. But wouldn't it be neat to have one? So again, Bob's got to do orders. He's got to chunk it out all on his own. So this is what Bob looks like at the end of the process. I don't know. If you're like me, that's he's pretty loaded down with things that he doesn't have to be loaded down with. Yeah, he deals with 100 different vendors. He's got 100 different price sheets. His day's pretty busy. Um, yeah, that's probably unnecessary, right? So what would it look like? Right? We've hopped the fence. That Now we know what it looks like on the other side of the fence to Bob. I don't think he's too happy. So now what I'm going to do is do a little role playing and I'm going to call Bob with a different approach. And so I'm going to call him the beginning of the year. It's going to, it's going to sound and feel a little different. So uh, bear with me. So here we go. Right. Ding-a-ling-a-ling. Hello, Bob here. Bob, Jeff Mason with uh, ABC Company. How are you today, sir? Uh, very good, Jeff. Uh, what, what can I do for you? Hey, if you can just give me five minutes, Bob, I've got some really exciting news at the beginning of the year I want to share with you, and I think you're going to really love it based on uh, you know doing business with us last year. 
uh, okay, I, I've got five minutes right now. Great, great. Let me just uh, walk you through it, Bob, and you don't even have to respond. I can just tell you a little bit about it. You know, great, Jeff. Great. Let's 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 go ahead. Thanks. All right. First things, Bob, I sent you an electronic file. You should get it any second now. And it's got our new pricing on it for this year. You're going to love this. Now, what we've done is we put everything into an Excel sheet. And in that Excel sheet, Bob, we've put new columns in. So there's a column there that shows you what the price increases this year and it compares it to last year. So you can see just in, you know, an eye shot where the price differences are. Second thing we've done with that file, which I think you're going to love, we've removed all those separators. Remember those annoying things, those rows that got in there with the color, the yellow background, the big print? We've got all that out of there because I know you like to work with numbers and, you know, you'll streamline your research process if you, and your export process if you just have numbers to deal with. So we took those separators out. In addition, we combined all four brands this year and put all four brands into that file. We put a filter on the top row on that Excel report. So now you can filter that information, sort it rather, because it's filtered. And you can put the uh, style numbers in ascending style. You can put it, there's a column there for the brand. You can sort it by brand. And, and you know, you can begin to manage that file a whole lot easier from the, from the year before. Jeff, you have no idea how wonderful this sounds. Thank you so much. Whoever in your company did that, thank you so much for doing it. Bob, not a problem. We, uh, you know, I definitely heard what you said last year. I, and, and a number of customers told us, and it just really wasn't, you know, something that uh, we should have done. Now, a couple other things. On the PDF flyers and on the website, if you go onto the website now, Bob, you're going to notice we've got style numbers up. We've got style numbers on the web, on the flyers as well. So, man, this year you can just zoom right from the flyer, working with your customer, right to the Excel report, and you should be easy peasy to be able to find the number. So I, hopefully that uh, uh, makes your life a little bit easier. Jeff, Dude, you are a rock star. This, I love it. Oh my gosh, it's going to be so easy to do business this year. Yeah, last thing is, Bob, I know I know you mentioned it and you, you're not going to be able to benefit from it, but we changed our, our dealer application. So, and, and basically what we've done is we've asked the, the people on my end, like the sales guys, to fill all that information out. We talked to management. They said, you know what, that's a great idea. So anybody who does it again, sorry you didn't benefit from it last year, but we're going to fill out the ancillary information just so we don't saddle the customer with that. Jeff, I have a buddy of mine who I'm in an association with. He wants to do business with you. I'm going to give you his email address. Could you send him an application? Dude, he's going to love that. Just you're making business so much easier. Thank you so much, Jeff. Hey, Bob, no problem. We heard you last year and I just want to make sure that, you know, you knew from the horse's mouth what we did differently. Well, you made my day, sir. Have a great day. Thanks so much. I can't, uh, can't wait to rev up the business this year with you. Thanks so much, Bob. Take care, sir. So, wow. Wouldn't that phone call be cool to have? Because what you've really done, right, is you've really told Bob that, you know, Bob, all those work-bearing loads I put on you last year, man, they're just, they're just going away. They're just gone, buddy. You got a clean slate. Look at that. You're operating streamlined, right? And this is great, right? That's going to bring joy to customers, um, faces. That is going to make customers have a healthier perception of your company. That is going to allow them to get more excited about doing business with you because you're respecting their time. You're supplying them with the information the way they need it supplied. In addition, in these Excel spreadsheets, man, in today's world, especially with shipping and weights, make sure you put your uh, length, height, width, depth dimensions in, uh, make sure you put your weight in of the product so that they can, uh, if they have to set it up for projected shipping costs, they can do that. Put your UPC numbers in there. Don't, you know, the, the days of, of giving a customer a UPC number in three, two or three different, you, you know, uh, Excel columns, that does not them no good. They need it in one column strung together with the checking digit on there. They don't, you know, they, that's how they need it today. So just think, Again, about that, think about what you can do to make the customer life easier 
and how you can possibly transfer the weight-bearing load over to the people who do need to wear that workload. And that's us. It's, it's us. We, don't, we shouldn't transfer that over to the cu customer. They got enough to do. So you want to bring joy to a customer? That's the way to do it. I want to bring joy to you. The Almond Joys. Who are they? In 1966, Dwayne and Greg Almond got together as the Almond Joys. Actually, before that. Uh, and this is before the Hourglass that they were part of. And this is before the Almond Brothers. So we're rewinding from the Almond Brothers back through Hourglass and into the Almond Joys. Well, I'll tell you what. They did a version of Tiny Bradshaw. Tiny Bradshaw, rhythm and blues guy. A um, uh, 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 great guy. Um, oh, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting my artists mixed up. It's not Tiny Bradshaw. They're doing cross. Sorry about that. They're doing a tune called Crossroads. These guys loved Cream, I think, but Cream did cross. These, these guys did Crossroads. As the Almond Joys. Oh my gosh, you are gonna love this tune. When I heard it, Matt. Deets, I'm telling you, the air guitars came out in the basement. I'm glad my wife was not around to see that. I started doing that Michael Jackson shuffle. I mean, the peppiness in this, the snappiness in this version, I don't know. I just, I went through the roof. So I hope you guys like it. Crossroads, the Almond Joys, Greg and Dwayne Almond, 1966. Enjoy. We'll see you next week. Thank you so much.